Anchor is a fantastic uh, platform for podcasting. It's it's so simple. It's uh, remarkable. Even I could do it. And uh, it's uh, free distribution, free recording, uh, easy, simple, elegant to use uh, framework, great tools. Um, if you're going to pick one uh, podcasting forum, a platform, uh, it should definitely be Anchor. I highly recommend it. The bottom half manages up while the top half manages down. Part three. The information for this podcast comes from my book, Advanced Success Secrets. You get a free copy of each of my books at alexhammerbooks.com. That's A-L-E-X-H-A-M-M-E-R B-O-O-K-S dot C-O-M. So this uh, part three picks up obviously with part two left off. I'm an autonomous being apart from what my parents or others want from me. As I get older, I pick my own clothes. I pick my own friends. If my parents don't like it, sometimes so much the better. I have more confidence to do this when I know that my parents love me and won't abandon me. If I don't feel that, then I may become overly dependent and fearful and timid so that they, so that they do not abandon me or in bad cases abuse me, etc. I may overcompensate in the other direction by acting out my distress, doing more reckless or destructive or self-destructive behaviors. I could get into a power struggle with my parents. You see how strong this need to develop an autonomous sense of self is. At some level, we must realize that our future survival extends beyond our parents and into our own, our own ability to survive outside of them. So we better get to work on ourselves. Unfortunately, however, it seems in order to bolster ourselves as we work to do this, we have to go a little topsy-turvy in our view of the world feeling that we are more capable than we really are. Hence, the greatest confidence of our younger years, tempered later by experience, may be viewed as a sense of overconfidence. But overconfident into the adult world we go. They have done research on optimism and have found that optimistic people are significantly less realistic in their perceptions than our pessimistic individuals, but also significantly more successful as well. Optimistic people are much more resilient and persistent, likely because they believe in the best outcome, even if they are overrating their skills, as optimistic people have been shown by research to do. But maybe this result also bears out that we have to be a little bit unrealistic in order to keep going. If we saw and focused on everything that can and sometimes will go wrong, then maybe we'd never even start out in the first place. It will give up more easily along the way. Perhaps optimism, or blind faith, if you will, is sort of a gift that allows us to persevere much more than we otherwise would, solving problems and over, um, overcoming obstacles in the process. When we're younger, we sometimes don't know enough not to give up. Enough to give up, actually. What can be a big part of our success, of course, we sometimes don't know, hard to give up, which could be a big part of our success. Of course, the wisdom of experience is helpful as well. Successful people retain the optimism of youth, but but temper it with the experience and wisdom of learning. If we remain overly optimistic in our later years, we may be in for a heap of pain over time. But conversely, if we become resigned and pessimistic based upon our losses or failures over the years, that that will also limit our success in the future. Somehow, we have to be able to simultaneously see the best, but recognize the worst. The hope for the best, but prepare for the worst, well, well-known mindset, you might say. Successful people are well aware of the pitfalls that may be out there, but they're also well aware of their strengths as well, and their ability and history of solving problems and overcoming obstacles. Perhaps their continuing confidence, while tempered, is still strong, not because they think that success will be easy, but because they realize that they can persevere and continue, and continue towards their goals, 
even when success is difficult. Managing up also involves an in-out aspect. It takes time and effort to establish oneself in this world. And life is very, very, very competitive. Once you get in a position, those on the outside who crave your position are you warily. It is a sad fact of life that perhaps everything that we have in life, or at least many things, many things others want. They want our money. They want our positions. They may even be envious of our relationships, our good looks, our good looks, whatever. There are a lot of reasons why those who have a lower station in life would like to bring down a peg or two, a level or two, those above them. Jealousy is a human emotion. And so is ambition. It is famously said that there are two ways to build the tallest building. You can build a building that is taller than any other, or you can build a building which is shorter and then tear down anything which is larger than yours. In the laws and secrets of success, is it was discussed how the successful do not let themselves be baited, by and large, by those less successful than them. And they also have a lot of institutional support to have their back as well. Everything from the legal field to the legislature, etc. Successful people have mastered their own behavioral responses to such a degree that they very carefully pick their battles and have learned to let those less than successful than them just wear themselves out in futile attacks. End of part three.